All right, guys, how's it going? Uh, coming back for another uh, V6 Firebird update. I think I did one of these about a month ago, but uh, lots changed since then, so we're gonna do another update. So we'll start off in the engine bay. Uh, I believe the last update I went over the braces, but I got those on there, those seem to be working fine. I added a power steering cooler, which I can show you. So it uses a factory power steering pump, the factory reservoir, but underneath, we will take a peek. Oh, as I climb on the ground. Ah, there. That is the $20 power steering cooler. It, it is kind of uh, it is kind of ghetto the way I got it uh, secured to the car. I used one of these supplied zip ties. That's these like black circular ones. And then I added some of my own zip ties just to make sure it didn't go anywhere. But um, I've been driving it like that for about a thousand miles. And uh, I did do one track day with it like that. And it seems to be holding up fine. And uh, the good news is that it uh, seems to help. It seems to actually work. Because uh, my power steering fluid used to be constantly boiling over. And now it is not. And it was actually pretty simple to install. I basically just took the return line from the steering rack. And I plumbed it into the cooler. And then I took uh, the line out of the cooler and ran it up to the reservoir. I see I got it zip tied together so that it doesn't hit the ground and blow up. That would be bad. While we're under here, you can see that I got the brand new UMI 35mm solid sway bar with the polyurethane bushings. I just put that on a couple days ago. I haven't actually driven the car yet with the new sway bar on yet. So I'm excited to see how that goes. Um, the install of it wasn't that bad. The hardest part of the whole thing was just greasing it because uh, my grease wasn't wasn't cooperating with my grease gun very well. But that's not the sway bar's fault by any means. Other than that, sway bar was a pretty easy install. As you see on the floor here, I have a valance panel. Uh, I, these came in pairs when I bought them, but um, I only had to replace the passenger side. And that was because uh, my original one, as you can see over here, these tabs are broken. And this is where the fender liner attaches to the to the valance panel. And these are broken, and uh, on the racetrack, my car was having some serious issues bottoming out. Just because the track was really bumpy. And on the passenger side, the uh, tire was rubbing in here and it broke all the stuff. And So I had to replace that, unfortunately. But I put the new car, I got the new valance panels from carpart.com, kind of a sketchy website. But um, I bought a pair of these valance panels for $33, and uh, they seem to work. It fit, fit on the car okay. They don't feel nearly as thick or as good of quality as the OEM ones, but for the price, you know, you get what you pay for. But they, they work, it, all the holes lined up and everything, so I can't complain too much. We'll look in here. See, I'm still running the STRT shocks in the front with the Strano Springs. Not a bad setup by any means, but the shocks aren't fantastic. Uh, the car does float a little bit under, uh, you know, racetrack conditions. So like on the street, these are too stiff, but on the track, they're too soft. So it's kind of a, a bad middle ground, but it is what it is. But you see here, I'm running these C5 Corvette brakes. Now I intended to make a video on installing these. It didn't really work out. Um, I was having some issues with uh, my brake line not wanting to come apart, so I'm still using the stock brake hose. But honestly, it seems to be working fine like that, but it, it was just a mess. I'll show you what I got going on though. I'm using the LG Motorsports bracket I got off LS1 Tech. I had to put some washers in between the uh, mounting bolts and the spindle, otherwise I was having issues with them uh, contacting the pad abutment bracket. So it was all around just kind of a pain, but I'm running a C5 Corvette rotor from Power Stop, just a Geomet blank one, and I'm running StopTech sport pads. And that whole setup there stopped really well on the track. It had very good heat management properties. Uh, never ran into brake fade once. So that set, that setup was pretty cool. Um, I'll make a whole video on the C5 brake kit later on. But uh, overall, I think it is an improvement over stock. As you can see here, this hub is kind of shiny. It's because I just replaced it. It's a brand new SKF uh, stock replacement hub. 
I did both sides and um, I seem to be still running into some pad knockback issues on the racetrack. Um, apparently these uh, good old general tires are a little too sticky for the stock hubs so I might have to get one of those uh, SKF X Tracker hub adapter kits. I was kind of uh, hoping I wouldn't have to do that because it's extraordinarily expensive but we'll see. Time will tell. Uh, the interior, you can see I got the Corbo seat. I got a whole video on that. Other than the Corbo seat, nothing much has changed in here other than my new fan switch, which I made a video about yesterday. But uh, everything else, business as usual in here. I do have my little uh, Velcro pad up on the dash. That's where I put my race box. That thing uh, times your laps and stuff and G-forces. It's kind of a cool little thing. I'm glad I got it. Obviously added some more stickers to both sides, you know, every race car's got to have stickers, including the tracks that you've been to, you know, got to, got to show off a little bit, but we'll take a look back here, this is where it gets kind of interesting, so I have the new UMI 22mm uh, solid sway bar, new bushings and all that, that's all on there, again, that installed pretty easily with the help of my sister, who helped me, because putting on a sway bar by yourself, it's, you know, you only have so many hands, but uh, my sister helped me out, that was cool. And I uh, see here I have yellow shocks in the back now. These are Coney Sport shocks, and I got these because um, I was having issues with my STRT shocks just riding really rough, but like not controlling the rear end very well. So I was always on the bump stops, on the bump stops, on the bump stops, it really irritating me. So from what I've read, the Sport shocks are supposed to be better. And uh, Summit Racing was actually having a sale on them, and I believe that sale is going through June 30th. Uh, it's 20% off all Coney shocks. So I actually bought, I put these on this car, and I like them, the adjustable shocks. And uh, so I bought another set for my Trans Am, so I'll be putting those on. Um, so I'll probably do a video on that when I do my Trans Am, the comparison. But uh, these are the on-car adjustable ones. And uh, I can show you how that works, actually. So the uh, Coney shocks, they come with a little knob, a little knob that goes on the top of them. And since I've already cut the holes in my carpet, is that going to clear? Yeah, we're good. You, uh, you just put the little knob on the, uh, on the post and you spin it. And spinning it either loosens or tightens your shocks. So on the street, I run them at full soft because that's what rides the nicest and then on the track I just firm them up not quite all the way but about three quarters of the way and that seemed to do okay but um, I did end up putting another McBay uh, lift kit on this car I did put one on my Trans Am and I've been happy with it so I wanted to do one on this car as well because I was having issues with it bottoming out on the racetrack so uh, this kit little you know I think it was like 60 bucks off eBay works really well it does lift the car up about a half inch so it works out nicely but here's the uh, here's the funny part after my racetrack extravaganza earlier in the week I came home and I put the car up on the lift to start doing some sway bars and whatnot and I found this so this is what uh, remains of my factory bump stop As you can see it is uh, seen better days uh, at least this side had some kind of bump stop left the, dry, or the passenger side, the bump stop had completely broken off at the racetrack. So I got some very overly expensive uh, stock replacement bump stops. Now they make different kits to do this. Uh, Hawks third gen has a lot of kits to adapt um, much cheaper rubber or polyurethane bump stops. Um, some of them have spacers to get around this lip. Some of them require you to cut this lip off. It's really a pain. Um, I just wanted to get a new stock bump stop, but these are about oh, it's 100 bucks for the pair. It was not cheap by any means. Um, for how simple this little piece is, I was kind of angry about that, but it is what it is. Foam, this is like a really like high density foam, but um, foam is the best material to use for a bump stop. So polyurethane or rubber, it's not, not great at... Uh, smoothly stopping the motion of the axle so I got some of those put them on both sides it was a really easy install you just do a screw there and a screw there put the new one on no big deal so hopefully that uh, those leads last a little while because they were <laughs> they were kind of expensive more expensive than they should have been but um, 
yeah, I think that's that's kind of the main things here. I haven't been able to get my air lid on yet because I've been playing with different uh, coupler setups. I got something coming from eBay though that should help install that. I got some like uh, like crinkle like dryer tube almost. So we'll see if that works because the throttle body, if you measure with a caliper from end to end, it's 3.75 inches, and the opening of the air lid, the new air lid, is 3.75 inches. But if you measure this. The inner diameter is like two and three quarters. So we're like we're basically losing an inch of uh, airflow there, right here. And then this is like an ellipse shape, and it's you know not very efficient either because it's very very small. So I'm hoping the new air lid just opens this whole intake setup up a lot and possibly removes a restriction, but we'll see. I doubt it's going to make that much of a difference. I think the uh, I think the catalytic converter on this car is clogged. So, I do have headers and a Y-pipe for this car. Um, when I'll be able to put that on, I have no idea, but maybe uh, maybe over the winter or something. But yeah, over here, obviously more stickers, you know, every race car's got to have stickers. Uh, business as usual over here though, lift kit, bump stop, Coney Sport. Here's the, uh, here's the street shocks, or the STRT shocks. Oh, they're both going to fall out. So that's the street shock. Um, it's not defective or anything. It worked okay. But I think when the car's lowered to the extent that this car was, these just aren't super happy about it. And these, these, these orange shocks are very cheap. These were about 80 bucks or 85 bucks a piece. So I can't complain too much. The, uh, I won't be doing the Coney Sport front shocks because they're super expensive, even, even with this current sale going on. The Coney yellows in the front are would be about 600 bucks for the pair just for the fronts um, So that's a ton of money And to be honest with you, I had more of a problem with the rears anyway With the orange ones the front ones are doing okay, so Yeah, the yellows are about hundred and sixty bucks a piece for the rear with the current sale so if now, if you want to get Coney Yellows, now's the time. Or they're even having a sale on the orange, but they're uh, they're about the same price as they were when I got them a couple years ago. But um, yeah, business as usual in the back. Carded pretty well at the racetrack, though. I think I might have been fighting some uh, some uh, heat issues. The car felt like it was a pull in timing or something. Just felt really slow. So I got a 160 thermostat to go in there. Hopefully that uh, helps me out a little bit. But the power steering cooler seemed to help. Um, maybe down the road I'd do a little higher quality power steering cooler. I was just kind of testing it out to see if it would work. And it does. It does. It was a significant improvement. Um, eventually I'm going to have to get a new hose. I did get, I ordered a new brake line. I had a well, whole kit for the whole car actually. Um, so I'll have to replace this one eventually because I rounded this nut off trying to get this off. So it's not leaking or dangerous right now, but when I do my CTSV brakes eventually, when I have to take this off, I am going to have to replace this uh, hard line. So I'm not looking forward to that. But the C5 brakes are, they're doing fine to be honest. They're working very well. But that about sums it up for the V6 Firebird update. Car's running pretty good. Um, Factory clutch is holding on for the time being. I'm not, uh, I'm dreading the day that that fails. But it's an old car, anything can happen. But yeah, thanks for watching, guys. Any questions, feel free to ask. Um, I'm going to race track on Friday with this car. Uh, hopefully, I can get some videos. I tried to get some videos at, on Monday when I went to the track, but it was, uh, my camera was having issues. And then my suction cup mount was having issues. So I think I'm just going to say screw it. And I, I got some adhesive GoPro mounts. And I think I'm just going to stick them to the inside of the hatch and just leave them there. So, uh, just so I don't have to worry about suction cups anymore. Because the suction cups were really giving me a hard time. But, uh, yeah. So thanks for watching, guys. Any questions, comment. And uh, I always try to answer them best I can. And I'll see you on the next one. Remember to subscribe so you don't miss any of my future uploads.